On July 24, 2013, the Winnipeg Police Service held a news briefing at the Public Safety Building to release the service's 2012 Annual Statistical Report. Chief Devon Clunas was in attendance to address members of the media. You've all been anticipating, awaiting this presentation. And so I'd just like to start with a few brief comments before we get started with the stats. Now, I've been told by some, you know, typically that the media simply you report on the facts. But I think you do actually a lot more than that. I think the media, you hold a fairly unique position in society that you have the ability to influence, to impact people's perception of what reality is. And I think it really is a very unique and very powerful position that you hold in society and definitely in the city of Winnipeg. And I know full well that sensational headlines do sell papers, drives traffic to websites, and ultimately, if we're going to be absolutely honest about it, it does fuel the bottom line. And so I think all of us, we do get that. And some of us have gone so far as to say simply that we know that crime sells. But I don't necessarily share that philosophy. I believe that what crime ultimately does is it robs us oftentimes of the potential for ourselves and for our city as a whole. And so as we present these stats, the reality is this. Winnipeg is making significant strides in losing what's been a lingering image of us being a crime-ridden city. We're losing that. And I truly believe that our citizens need to know that. It encourages our citizens, us individually, but corporately as a city, to take additional steps to continue to move forward. Uh, it creates a deal, great deal of energy within the city for our members, our citizens, to know that we're making these great strides. Now, as the chief of police, I would never presume to tell you how to report on an issue. That is your right. But I would ask you to do this as we report on these stats. Consider what kind of city even yourselves, as citizens, would like to live in. And consider how you report on the facts, how that will impact us moving towards, ultimately, that city that we all desire. Now, my hope for our city, for our citizens as a chief of police, is for us to reside, to live in a city that's absolutely permeated by a culture of safety. And there's a great deal, I believe, that you, as individuals, as the media, can do to help bring about that reality for our citizens in terms of how we report on the facts. So I would just like to begin with that piece, because I think you do play a very significant role in helping to create the image of our city. So having said that, let us begin. As you can see, what I've just said, when you look at the overall crime numbers, we see a significant decrease right across the board in all categories. 3% decrease in overall crime, 6% decrease in violent crimes, 3% decrease in property crimes, 7% decrease in drug crimes, 6% decrease in criminal traffic offenses, a 5% increase in all other crime categories. And that part is not a negative because you'll see what's driven that is the proactive engagements that we've taken as an organization. But something that's very important for us to do because typically sometimes we'll look at a year to year comparison and it can actually give you a skewed reality of what's taking place in your city. But when you look at the five year averages, I think we should be very encouraged with this. We can see that there's been a 23% decrease in overall crimes. Think about that in the past five years, and I think about five years from now, what our city can be like. It's going to be a significantly different place to live in. 29% decrease in violent crimes, 21% decrease in property crimes, 21% decrease in drug crimes, 11% decrease in criminal traffic offenses, and again, we talk about this 12% increase in all other crimes. Again, that's because of some of the proactive engagements that we've been involved in. Other crime categories include Proactive policing initiatives such as the foot patrol in the downtown area or cadets, all of these things, specifically focusing again on many of these initiatives in the downtown area because for myself, for the organization as a whole, the health and welfare of the downtown is important. When we think about downtown Winnipeg, we think about the heart of the city and I think it's very important that we have a healthy, vibrant downtown to help support a healthy, vibrant city of Winnipeg. 
Now again, when we look at the police initiated events in what we call Division 11, specifically looking at the Portage Avenue districts, so you can see it here in blue, a significant rise in that. And what I'm saying that is a positive for us because that means that we're out and we're consistently engaging in that community and by that increase in engagement actually that's what causes a decrease in terms of the overall crimes that we're seeing. Again, when you look specifically at the Portage Avenue District, we have what we call stranger and familiar. You know, and that's a situation whereby a stranger crime where the assailant is not known to the victim and in cases where the victim and the assailant, they know each other. You can see there's a significant reduction in terms of the stranger crimes only, 21%. We need to report that very loudly to the population here in the city to make them fully aware that our downtown is becoming safer and safer all the time. It is a safe place to be. Our city is moving in the right direction. We're making significant progress, but are we satisfied? I would say no. We know there's significant more work to be done. Uh, one of the areas which is really concerning to us as an organization, and I think as a police community, are the number of assaults against peace officers. Those are on the rise. Nationally, we also need to recognize that we, as a city, may be quite high when we look at the CMA rankings for homicide rates, violent crime rates, and the crime severity indices. But again, we need to look at the averages over the years. We can see that the violent crime severity index were significantly declining. But that is a plus. That is what I would like to get out to our citizens. Now what it is but the fact that we're significantly declining. When you look at the last, since 1998, and I really want you to report on these figures, these are the lowest numbers we have seen. So Winnipeg is moving very quickly in the right direction. And that's the type of messages which I truly believe gains energy in the community and causes people to say, what can I do to help this move even quicker in the right direction? Creating a culture of safety, you know, that's been my motto. That's what I want us to be known for. So, uh, in my first eight months, I've been out in the community. We've had 12 community forums, nine member forums. And from the messages that I'm hearing from the community, that will help to form the strategies that we will utilize going forward to fully permeate the city of Winnipeg with this culture of safety. And again, we're working very closely with schools. I believe schools are a significant piece as we go forward in terms of creating that culture. Uh, we're targeting, again, people say this is the oldest profession in the world, but when you look at prostitution, I think it's a re-victimization of the victim, so we're changing the way that we approach that. Gang tragedy. And of course, we have to look at our diverse populations, recognizing that the success of our city going forward is closely tied to the success of each and every single component of our population. Crime prevention through social development, one of the key pieces. So again, I spoke about the gang strategy. We have just realigned one of our units to be more proactively engaged in attacking the gang situation from a strategic suppression standpoint. But we also need to be very proactive, and that's part of why I say we really need to get into the schools more so and engage young people at a very early stage. We have enhanced our diversity relations sections. Again, when you look at significant growth in our population, it's coming from specific demographics, and we need to ensure that these demographics are being successful in the city of Winnipeg and are not in a position that will make them more susceptible to being involved in crime. Again, we spoke briefly about the sex trade strategy in terms of refocusing our approaches there and the tactics that we'll utilize to address this issue. And again, patrol deployment, uh, for a period of time in our city, we have been very much response driven, uh, calls for service. But we're saying now we'd like to be more uh, intelligence led in ensuring that when we're deploying our resources, we're going to where the problems are. Not simply being led by the problem, but we're going to be proactively addressing these issues. And live safe. Live safe is a word that I want every Winnipegger to become aware of. Uh, this was a policy statement adopted by the city some five years ago. But what it speaks to is taking a comprehensive approach to addressing crime, not just from a police perspective, but we're saying from a community health perspective, engage in every single sector of our city to say proactively, what can we do to help eradicate the conditions which are conducive to crime in our city? 
Again, you've heard me say in the past that we can't simply think we're going to police away the issues that we're seeing. But when we take a comprehensive, holistic approach, I think absolutely we will see these numbers continue to decline and decline rapidly in the city. Sorry, the trends that you reported are they not similar across Canada? I think we're seeing significant decline uh, right across the country in terms of crime. Yes. And so, uh, is that? Uh, are police forces everywhere uh, doing the same thing? I mean, is it because of what police are doing, or is it because of demographics and other issues? I think it's a combination of all of those. Certainly, uh, police services have recognized, and not just here in Canada, but all of, all of North America, that we simply can't police issues away, that we have to start focusing on the social issues which are at the root cause of crime. Uh, and so you'll see, if you look within the police universe, all of us are starting to take this approach to policing. Chief, when you had one of those forums, or several of them, I know you heard that prostitution was a problem for a lot of neighborhoods, or some, some certain neighborhoods. Yes. Um, you say, you know, you're, the numbers are because you're, you're tackling it, or you're, you're, you've got a strategy. What, what exactly are the police doing um, to, to, to go after prostitution? Is it, is it concentrating on jobs, the workers? Like what, what are the police doing? Uh, there you go. A combination of all of those. But I think in the past, we have oftentimes focused on the prostitutes significantly. I'm saying we need to take again a philosophical shift because I do see these young women as victims. And so they're victims because we have grown men who are willing to come and further victimize them. So I think we need to pay a significant amount of attention to these grown men who are willing to come and further victimize these young women. But also at the same time, we need to provide greater opportunities for them to be able to escape that lifestyle. But I want men in this community who were willing to go and victimize young women to know that we're going to be very proactively be coming after you. Absolutely, fully, that piece I don't mind that you report. We're coming after the Johns very aggressively. And we're going to provide opportunities working with other resources within the community to help these young ladies leave that particular lifestyle. That is our statement on prostitution in the city. So is it more you know, undercover work to go after these Johns, like what kinds of things? Yes, a lot, of, a lot of undercover work, but we're also going to be proactive. Our, our uniform uh, cars will be out there as well. I think we need to have every segment of the police organization say that this is what we're about. So if you decide that you're going to be patrolling around those areas in your vehicle, expect to be stopped by our uniform officers, or expect that our UC officers will be there, and when you're arrested, you will be charged and there'll be other consequences attached to that because you're victimizing young people in our community and you're also adding to this negative image of our city. You said that um, assaults on police officers are on the line. What's, what's the reason for that? I don't have an answer to that. What, I guess the, the best answer I could give to that is when you look at society as a whole, the lack of respect for authority, that's a significant piece of it. But what I would like the populace to understand is this, an attack on a police officer is an attack on society itself. I truly believe that. Because we are at the line. We're holding the line. And if people are willing to attack a police officer, what will they do to a citizen? So I think we need to really uh, take note of that. And there needs to be stiff sentences when somebody does attack a police officer because we need to send a message that this is just not acceptable. We're here working for all of our citizens. We're on the front lines. And we shouldn't accept that. Are you calling for an increase in the sentencing, like a, an actual legislative change that, that boosts sentencing? Oh, absolutely. I do believe, like I said, an attack on a police officer is a greater attack on society as a whole, and we need to draw a firm line on that and say that's not, we will not tolerate that. Chief, uh, uh, you've talked about crime going down this year and in the last five years, but the number of police officers has actually increased 27 officers this year. So at what point do you say as a police force we have enough officers Crime is going down, these frontline officers aren't as needed. I have said that already. I've said very clearly to the administration, I'm not coming to you and asking for more officers. Uh, we're going to be as efficient as we can, give us an opportunity to implement some of the measures that we're talking about, this more holistic uh, community approach to policing, and I've not asked for more officers. I said, if we try this for a period of time, and simply see that crime is on the rise or we can't get things under control, by all means. But at this point, I'm saying that is enough. I'm not saying that it will be enough forever. I'm saying let's try this and see what happens in our community. My, my optimistic view is that it is enough. 
because if we work together cooperatively as a city, I think in the past what we have done is expect that it's simply the police service's responsibility to address issues of crime, not looking at the social issues. But if we collectively look at the social issues, which are at the root of crime, I do not believe there'll be a need for additional officers in the city of Winnipeg. How do you measure how many police officers are the right number for for a city of Winnipeg? Is there a way of measuring? Well, again, I think what we will be doing, we'll be going back to what I just spoke against. I say, first, we need to look at the issues that are at the root. And as we see those starting to decline, then we can, we can assess, do we have too many officers at that point? But at this point, I'm not making a statement that we have too many or too few. I'm saying, give us an opportunity to try a new approach. And from there, we can make a fair determination. Chief, uh, can I ask about clearance rates? Uh, a lot of them look pretty good except for one that pops out, which is the common sexual assault offense. The clearance rate is, like, I think it's 41%, no, 48%. What's up with that? Why, why is that so low? I can't give you a direct answer on that right now. Uh, that's something I can look into, but I, just off the top of my head to say this is why, I can't give an answer to that at this point. Are there any clearance rates here that give you any pause or sort of any cause for concern? No, again, when you look at simply, we talk about the city of Winnipeg and the types of crime and the volume of crime, uh, the stranger versus familiar, the resources, these are all things that I say we need to go back, take a look at our operation, how we're operating, and from that we can maybe next week give you a better answer, but at this point I wouldn't just want to try to pull something out of the air and say this is why that wouldn't be fair, fair to you or to ourselves at this point. Chief, do you think, uh, I mean, the politicians across the way like to stand up and say, look, you're fighting crime because you have a helicopter in the sky. Um, this was done for you, Chief. Um, has that done anything, do you think, to this, or is that more of a going after some, once something's happened? I mean, what, do you think the helicopter has helped in any way see this reduction? Well, I would never try to attach what we're seeing to any one specific. As I said, I think it's going to take a concerted effort. Uh, the helicopter is just one piece. Has it been involved in some significant pieces? Yes, that's a positive. But maybe it's given the perception to Mr. or Mrs. Bad person out there that, hey, somebody's watching all the time, whatever it might take. So again, those are the types of uh, questions that I won't just pick an answer up there and say, here's why. You really need to go back and take a real good firm look at that and say, did this actually play a part? Dollars well spent in the well, some would say this to you, if it saves one life, is that dollars well spent? If it stops a high-speed pursuit, uh, is that dollars well spent? That's a yes. Yes. Okay. Do you value it everything? Can you talk a bit about diversity, specifically on your force? Is it reflective of the, the changing face of, of our population? 25 years ago, when I started in the organization, 26 years ago when I started in the organization, the easy answer would be, no, it wasn't then. No, absolutely. The Winnipeg Police Service, City of Winnipeg, has led the way in terms of diversity and having a representative police organization to lead a very diverse city. Yes, very much so. Chief, you said that you're satisfied with the numbers of officers right now. Uh, what about the cadets? Do you see a role for a, a more expanded role? Um, yes, I see an expanded role for the cadets. And again, that's something that we will work very closely with the Winnipeg Police Association. Uh, it is a shared agreement. But yes, there's, there's more duties that we could uh, foresee the, the cadets being engaged in. You talked a little bit about, uh, you know, this. you look back at the numbers of the last five years. What do you envision for the city for the next five years? Do you really want that? <laughs> like, I dream very big. <laughs> I do. I think Except we can be a radically different city within the next five years if we adopt this approach and we have the partnership, I'm talking about a community partnership where everybody recognizes their responsibility. As I said in the past, I think most of us have just said, crime is the police's problem, let the police deal with it. Wrong approach. It's our problem, but let's address it from a community, holistic approach, dealing with the social determinants, the causes of crime in our city. And I truly believe, if everyone gets on that same you know, stream with me, Within five years, will be a radically different place. You've seen the decrease we're talking about in the last five years. It'll be significantly better than that. Do you think you have enough police officers now? You think that you haven't made a final evaluation? We'll see how things go. But aren't you, uh, aren't you scheduled still to get more police officers from the provincial funding, the city funding, and there's still more to come? 
there is more to come provincially. If somebody was to come to me and say, okay, here's some more police officers, where I would actually like to see the organization grow is in the civilian complement. And now you get back to where you said, I said, we have enough now. What I said was, I'm not asking for any more right now. Give me some time to look at the efficiencies, and then I will determine whether or not we need more. We may, but I don't know that for certain now. So for me to come forward and say, give me more police officers, we don't have enough time to look down and say we're being as efficient, efficient as we can be, and have we had enough community engagement. But I think it's the right type of community engagement, the right type of partnerships, uh, rectifying what we have in our city is not about more police. But you are getting more police, so aren't you? Isn't your conflict going to rise over the next There are commitments, but again, it doesn't mean that we necessarily have to say, yes, we need more police. Okay. Okay, so you can use that funding for civilian? That, that's what I would love to do along the way. Can you? It's a, all of these are negotiations. Okay. So if I can negotiate that, that's what I would ultimately like to do. What would you like the civilians yeah. to do? Yeah. We need civilian additional analysts. Uh, again, wanting us to be more intelligence-led. Uh, we need greater complement of individuals within our court unit to ensure that, yes, once we arrest someone, we can get those documents to the courts in a timely manner. There is a significant amount of work that's done behind the scenes to support what you see on the face of the police service. And I don't believe most people recognize the importance of having civilians in the organization. We can't run a police service with just police officers, believe it or not. We need significant support behind. Otherwise, there will be times where we have a police officer doing a job that really should be done by a civilian clerk. Who would be better trained and able to do that? And the police can do what a police officer is supposed to be doing. So uh, maybe part of the support that politicians might need is for the public to realize and support, actively support, when a government might, government might come forward and say, we're going to provide civilians to a police service that it's just as valuable as saying we're providing a police officer. Would you get, would that be supported, do you think, or have you had the conversation with the WPA? I don't think the WPA would have an issue with that. They're all members of the WPA. Okay. Has the external, uh, the external review, has that started yet? Or? Uh, it's almost concluded. Yes. Chief, you started out talking about perception versus reality and, and representation. Um, the, percep the common perception is downtown isn't safe. What do these numbers tell you? The numbers tell me downtown is very safe. And uh, again, that's the message I want our citizens to understand. You can come downtown. You can walk downtown. You can spend time downtown. Downtown is a very vibrant place to be. And it's only getting better all the time. Uh, a healthy downtown is a healthy city of Winnipeg. Chief Clintus, you say that you dream very big. I do. But the reality is in Winnipeg that we do have a lot of issues with gangs, um, and a lot of murders that happen here are related to to gang activity. So how how you talked a bit about you know changing I think part of the force over to, to be more into mm -hmm. the gang strategy. Can you expand a bit of, uh, more on that? Well, again, I talked about the gang situation. If we have a gang problem. Again, do we think police and alone? Why do young people get involved in gangs? A lot of reasons. Yes. And I'm saying, if we get to the front end of that and address those issues, gangs will take care of themselves. Because there's be no need for someone to want to gravitate to that. That's why I said it's so important that we look at the social determinants. Uh, we start working with schools. Uh, during the community forums, one thing that came up very strongly was that people are crying out for better parenting. This is the community asking for that. So if we engage the right uh, partners in the community say we need to provide better parenting courses, stronger neighborhoods, the gangs will take care of themselves. So we can say, okay, what is the police service going to do to address the gang issue? We're doing our piece with those who have chosen that this is a lifestyle they want. We will address it. We can eradicate that piece of it. But if it just continues to flow because we don't have the right environment that's nurturing young people, parenting, all of that, Police service can never eradicate gangs, not on their own. We need, this is a community initiative. And that's why we get back to what I said earlier was that, yes, I can see significant change if, if everyone got on board and say, we're going to play our part in this. We can't expect government alone to do it, the police service alone, social service agencies alone. But imagine the power that's behind all of us saying we have a part to play in owning that. 
media having a part to play in saying, when there are good things happening in a community, I'm going to report on it. Because it's important, because when people hear good things, they want to do more good things. And so that also sells. And that's what I meant with my early address to you. It's easy to look at the stats and say, okay, which part is going to get somebody to pick up a paper or go to my website? But which part is going to encourage our citizens to say, this is a good community in which to live and it's getting better all the time. What can I do to help it move forward? That's what I'm talking about.